Welcome and uh, really great to see even after lunch so many people joining um, a presentation because I know how tired I am when I'm doing something in the afternoon. What I will present is really one way to describe what is an enterprise AR solution and what did we learn with internal and external projects with respect to be successful with it. But I thought first I, I would like to describe what is an AR use case for the enterprise. It's not, in our opinion, that you are a big enterprise or a small one. There are a couple of criteria we believe you need to fulfill and, and have in mind when you deploy an AR use case and define it by that way. It, it is at least a solution to support a whole or a significant part of your organization. It's not a tiny little project somewhere or in a, in a little corner. It's something which influences your whole organization or at least a, a significant part out of it by applying augmented reality. It needs to be something where you build for the current needs and scale with the future. So an enterprise AR case is fulfilling what I need right now, but able to grow in the future. It needs to work with the existing tools and processes, which means you don't throw away what you already have. It's not uh, something replacing something, so an enterprise solution has to work with those has to, to take what you only invested over years. It should have the goal of a global rollout, at least, and global is in quotes here, a significant amount of users. It's not an enterprise solution, our definition, when you roll it out to 20 people or 30 people in a plant, because you do a pilot, you do a test. But if you decide you roll it out, five countries, uh, 20 workshops in each country, etc. Suddenly is a totally different challenge and then you are in the enterprise case. Then, then you need to fulfill totally different um, demands and criteria. It needs to have a clear return of investment and must be able to reach that return of investment. So an enterprise use case for AR needs a return of investment. If I cannot save money, if I cannot sell more, if I cannot do, and this is not tailored that way, then it's not an enterprise use case, and I don't, I don't would consider it that way. And finally, I need to support different departments in an ideal case, and different divisions or different departments. And, and most, when I showed this to my colleagues, they said, why do you think this? And, and a, a department, we even sell to individual departments, it says, yes, we sell to individual departments, but I need to get engineering involved with the department who's doing it because I need data for it. So if I have an enterprise case, I have to have all of this in mind. It's multiple departments or different divisions getting together. And all of these criteria together would, would be the, the founding box or multidimensional box uh, for an AR enterprise deployment. Okay, how do I get now? Oh, I forget one. The, the, the table was it. driven by a larger strategy. So it should not be an isolated one. It should be a strategy. I want to update my documentation. I want to update the way I communicate with my customer. There needs to be a strategy behind an enterprise use case, an enterprise um, application. But now, what is an example? I, I just I cannot show you the examples we have made for customers, but I can show you examples we're discussing out of the area we know very well, which is automotive. And, and this would be a case where you say, hey, I have a workshop, and I want in this workshop every part or every piece of it supported by augmented reality. So I want to have a support of an entrance check. But even if you're not autom automotive um, technicians or know this very well, but you all brought your car once or twice to a dealer 
and they look at the car at the beginning to analyze it. Then somebody wants to, to tell you what they need to repair. And third, they do a diagnostic to really find problems or they do a repair. Um, uh, most likely they do a repair when they found a problem. Um, they, they do at the end a customer presentation. What have they done? You get a paper. So, and, and, and you may want to upsell something. So all of this is fulfills the criteria we had before because we involve multiple departments. We have multiple uh, different data sources we would need to integrate. We would be in, in existing processes because technical documentation is already there. Uh, services in a workshop already happening. This is nothing new. So I have to be part of that. I have to now think step by step how can I support with customer interaction? How can I support uh, with a repair? What is the, the, the best thing? How many countries would need this? How many different variants do I have to support? And then end. So this is a typical um, situation. We implement quite a lot. We have prototypes uh, um, for different uh, OEMs of such connected workshops. And from this, it's growing. It grows from this idea to a complete enterprise solution. But this would still, in our definition, not sufficient because we have a vision behind. And the vision behind is that augmented reality will be the central user interface of the future. So in the previous slide, you have seen we are holding tablets. I'm running around with a tablet to get information. Now we want to, to use glasses. And the glasses are not just showing what you have seen on the tablet. It's the central interface. I have different devices here. You see uh, there's an air conditioning service device in the background, a headlight adjuster, diagnostic system. Why do I need individual displays on the individual components if I have glasses and I superimpose everything through the glasses? I don't need to have something on the individual products. I don't need a display there. Everything gets sorted. And this is our vision. That's where we're working to. The first one was something we can realize right now. We know how to get individual pieces in a workshop. So we address different departments needs. And this is the overall overarching strategy. We want to make the service technician using this central interface for any type of information including customer interaction. The very first on the outermost entrance check, it's a live video stream of somebody sitting maybe at home at the time where his car drove by itself into the workshop for repair. Now I need a different way to interact with my customer. And, and, and I need to, to show him. I can superimpose stuff backwards. So the first one was what we want to build. This here is the vision. I think that's, that's now set what is, what is an enterprise case, an example of an enterprise case we're dealing with, we want, want to address. Now I want to give you a, a story. How, what we see, how you get from this initial having an idea and, and building up an, an industry, an enterprise case. And I have these two guys so as an example. And we, we always see the three phases. And I'm, I'm not sure in what phase you are right now or if you consider. But the first phase is always, do I need AR? And this is in a department. This is an, an individual manager. They read something and do I need AR? Is it mature enough? How can it help me? Where shall I start? And most of the time, what happens at that moment, you have somewhere an innovation organization, a little department who wants to do something. They build a limited proof of concept, most likely handmade, to just tailor something around. And, and the main goal here is to convince your manager. We have not a single customer. We have not seen exactly that happening. And I think it's a good thing. But to make an enterprise case, this is a dead end. Because you will be asked questions. Can I scale this? Can I, I, I bring this into a different level? Can I integrate more, more products? Can I do this and this? And, and there is no answer to it. So then the next phase happens. Um, we say, okay, I believe in AR. You convince your manager. And I think we see more and more customers coming to us and saying, or also Bosch internal customers, I believe. You don't have to convince me AR is a good thing. But I have other questions, which you may don't have an answer for me right now. You need to figure this out for me. And this is, how can I afford it? How can I manage it? And how will it be integrated? Think about, I'm talking large deployments, multiple products worldwide, um, with, with many, many end users into it, different departments. And the manager's asking, show me that this is solved. 
that you can do this. What we typically see then, there's a pilot and in integration. But a pilot with very concrete cases, I would like to evaluate the ongoing cost. You see, there is not somewhere written, evaluate if AR technology is working. It's working. But you need to prove that it's efficient, I can afford it, and I, I have a business case for it. What is the return of investment? Apply for complex use cases. Most likely in the simple POC, you did something which you could do very easily. But the typical example is show a service technician how to exchange a tire. If he doesn't know how to exchange a tire and he needs AR, fire that guy. <laughs> this is so simple, it is. And, and you will also, now I turn the other side, if you make a service technician use an AR tool to show him such simple things, he will not use it. But if you find something which is really helpful for him, he will use it all the time. Because they are not stupid, these guys. Just the opposite. They have great knowledge. You need to foster with a new technology their knowledge to give them an update. Multiple departments, industrialists in application and content. This means I already have to think about how do I manage variants? How do I manage deployments in different languages? How can I update my data permanently? Um, significant numbers of users. I'm not talking about 200 users. I'm talking about 500, 800 users, even if they don't use it permanently. But you need to get a feeling what happens if you deploy it to a larger amount. Will you have a bandwidth issue? Do you have the devices in field? Would they be able to understand it? Do I need localization or not? Um, and integration into existing process and tools. And this is the most complicated one. This is where a pilot very often says, okay, can I really do this? Because this is typically expensive. If I already have to think, how do I integrate it with my PLM system? How do I integrate this with my um, dealer management system to stay in, in the um, automotive industry? But here is to test your source data. Source data is engineering, is your information, you have your tools, etc. This is what you want to reach here. And then the final part, I will roll it out. What do I need? Because this is the next question. When I roll it out, I have certainly totally different solutions or problems to solve. It's hardware available. I may have tested with 500 people who have the hardware because they use their own mobile devices, but now they are not scalable, reliable, robust AR platform. So it, the first two I can make with a small supplier, maybe, but not the large one. Now I want to get somebody who's really able to deal 24 um, hours, 365 days a year. I want to have it all over the world uh, representation. I need to protect my data, my privacy, component creation and deployment and runtime. I need all of this suddenly in a much larger scale. I need it easy, customized and, and to integrate because now your IT department jumps on. The pilot, maybe, they say, oh, let that guy deal with it. But here, the IT department wants to be involved. They want to make the decision. They want to address all of these problems. And then partner with experience or large um, um, deployments and global support. So this, these are learnings from all our customer projects. And most of them, also there is no exception to this, they have emphasized one or the other aspects more and one or the other phases, but it's all the same. To summarize uh, what we have, we really believe to be successful you have to keep the whole product life cycle in mind from the beginning in all of your phases. And, and deployment needs an involvement of anyone in the product value chain at different phases, at different um, 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 stages, but they need to be involved. It's not just engineering who needs to be involved. Very often the only problem is, oh, engineering needs to boost the data. This is not true. You need to have people willing to apply it. You have people willing to transform it, give you access to the data, open your interfaces, open your, your uh, individual applications, etc. So now my time is running. What? Protect existing data and process when, when we, we have to. The what column on the left side is really what do you have to do and how do you have to do it? <laughs> Protect your data, existing data is a huge investment. You have existing processes, data, you may develop the last 10 years, 20 years. Clear definition of an AR application. Don't jumping around, today I do this, tomorrow I do that, etc. You need a clear definition from the beginning. Ensure the end user will accept what you're doing. Get your end user involved. 
If you don't get your end user involved, and this is the authors, the content creator, it's the, the technician or the owner or whatever who's using it, get them involved. Enable your existing team. Don't think about, oh, in the future I have totally different skill sets. Enable your existing team doing it. If you have them bought in, they generate for you whatever you want, and it will be a success. You do not need a complex solution to gain um, significant. In the press release today morning, you, to the ones uh, who have showed or seen our little video, there was a golf with little boxes in it. And this is the most primitive way of, of showing augmented reality because the only thing we did was showing a service technician where a given component is located. And we can save a significant amount of time when we just guide him to that position without adding additional hassle to, to go through a paper document or go through other um, individual pieces. This red blinking thing is disturbing here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, how integrate it to existing environment, have an overarching AR strategy, like we have when we say we want to integrate the workshop, but we have a long-term vision, we want to have this as a central user interface and going forward, build the solution with the end user in mind, we already said this, seamless integration, seamless integration. The, the one is successful when they actually don't see that it really has changed. They just have a different way of displaying information they had in the past, but now much more efficient. So they're not questioning, why do I have to do it now this way and not that way? Oh, they're eager to take it, this is the way I'm, I want to use it. Uh, don't wait until the next generation of hardware is ready. A lot of arguments right now is, oh, I need hands-free. We have a lot of managers at customers and at outing, we say, oh, I only can do it when I have my hands free. This is not true. You can gain a significant benefit already with tablets. The benefit with hands free and with, with glasses is much better, no question. But waiting until you can afford deploying glasses, start with the tablet, start with the simple things, have a system where your data can be published also to glasses later on, so you don't lose any of the investment of, in your data, which is by far the highest investment, not the technology. It's your content created. So AR can be successful deploying the enterprise. It's our opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>